Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. Ripple has been talking to central banks for a long time, says RippleNet GM. This was a really big deal yesterday. I didn't get to making the video just quite yet. So here we are today. Ashish Birla claims that central banks won't adopt the XP ledger overnight, but they've been in a lot of talks and there's about to be a whole lot of things that are going to happen over time. And oh my days, is this exciting to read. So during a recent interview with Thinking Crypto, Ashish Birla, the general manager of RippleNet, said that Ripple had been talking to central banks for a long time. And guys, I have a question for you all today. Do you think that XRP will be the ultimate bridge asset? Yes or no? Put it in the comment section down below and let's move on. As reported by you today, the San Francisco-based private company announced that it had started pitching a private version of the XCP ledger to central banks. Berla claims that its speed of transactions makes it a natural fit for central bank digital currencies. Quote, I think you're going to see more and more central banks around the world realize some of these benefits. Again, it's not going to happen overnight. We want to build and gain momentum. Apart from CBDC, Ripple is also having discussions with banks about other technologies, according to Rilla. And if you want more of this info, I recommend you guys to check out these interviews that Thinking Crypto does. They're very amazing, usually take about 48 minutes to an hour, but very often it is just very, very, very much worth it. At least in my own opinion, it is. If you want to get more info about Ripple, about XRP, all that stuff, yeah, that's the place to find it. That's the place to find it. Then Crypto Will posted something interesting, but before we get into that one, make sure you check out Bybit, a link is down below, because for the next two, three days, there's going to be a $1,000 deposit bonus. I think the reason this is happening is because there's a really big and interesting team competition coming up, and so everybody who hasn't made an account just quite yet, or who has made an account but never deposited, I'm not exactly sure, can get themselves a thousand dollars worth of bonuses right freaking now. So check it out. A link is down below. It's only going to be there for about three more days. So take action uh, if you want it. That is. Crypto Whale said, "20 years ago, General Motors and IEG were on top of the world. Apple." was the butt of jokes. Google was a startup and Facebook wasn't even a thought. The only constant in life is change. Don't overlook the small ones. And guys, this is so way much more important than people make it out to be. If I were to ever do any more mentoring or anything along those lines, I would always come back to this point that things constantly change. And one important thing to understand in the crypto space too is that even crypto will someday be obsolete or at least be kind of a fundamental of something newer that's built a layer higher. What I mean with that is that Bitcoin right now is a layer one and kind of a, a version one of the whole blockchain ecosystem, right? Well, as we just said a couple of weeks ago, Cardano is kind of a version three, for example, with Ethereum being kind of a number two. There's going to be a number four or five or six or seven, you know, these newer basically um, layers of technology. I'm not exactly sure what we kind of call it, kind of like versions. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the word they use for it is anymore right now. I'm not getting on it. But as time moves on, Bitcoin's technology, the blockchain tech, will most likely not become obsolete, but it could be like a fundamental, like Bluetooth, for example, was, and like the internet right now is. Then again, the actual technology will most likely be a lot more in-depth, a lot more elaborate. And for example, a way more efficient blockchain sort of system will be thought of. It's just a matter of time. And so from that perspective, if you think crypto is going to last 100 years, you might very well be right, because a lot of these legacy systems have stayed around for so many decades and, and ages, then again, you never really know. And the same thing goes for a lot of these people who don't want to adapt towards cryptocurrencies saying, no, it's just going to be a fad. It's just going to blow over. I don't think it will. I think it's literally a change that's about to happen. You can't really stop it anymore. Maybe at first 2017, I was sometimes hesitant whenever I used to make videos of crypto. But right now, it's grown on me so much. For the last four years, I've just be seen adoption and growth constantly. And if you see that from the perspective that I'm seeing it from, by researching it for hours and hours every single day, I think you start to understand that it's just growing and growing and growing, and there's no going down. Uh, you can have down periods, but ultimately, 
Even in the channel subscriber growth, for example, you see stagnation, yet you never see really the, the amount of, there's always people there and there's always a huge amount of people there and there will only be more people in the space. Even though the channel might do worse sometimes, like right now, very often we are losing some subscribers. Doesn't matter to me because I know eventually it'll come back up and it'll go higher than it is today uh, as crypto will just keep ramping up and keep getting bigger. Again, just my thoughts though. If you disagree, let me know in the comments section down below, but I firmly agree or firmly think that crypto right now is at a low little fire. It's going to eventually be put on a really high fire and then eventually it's going to be put back to a low fire with some new, even nicer stew being put on that high one. All right. Then Elon Musk comments on Tesla's Bitcoin holdings. Tesla CEO Elon Musk was, or I guess one thing I should also say is about the legacy system like Swift and whatnot. A lot of them right now at first were like, no, we're not going to change. Then eventually they, of course, had to change and started changing. Right now there's Swift Go as an example and the BIS also making some stuff. They can't afford to not do anything. And with XRP, that's specifically a really important situation. They can't afford to sit around and wait and do nothing. They just can't. It's, it's, it's going to be the death of them. All right, to Elon Musk. Let's quickly see. Dave Lee said, only Elon Musk and... Let me actually put the brightness up a little bit. Only Elon Musk and Tesla, master of coin, would do this. 42,000 Bitcoin times 35,000, which is the BTC close price on 630 is 1.5-ish billion or rounded to 1.47 billion as disclosed in their 10Q because they basically bought that amount. Elon Musk quickly went on to state, well, we don't have that many Bitcoin, but it's close. Now, what can we fetch from this? Almost nothing. They basically have, let's say, about, yeah, 40,000 Bitcoin or so. Maybe they bought exactly 40,000 and something went wrong in this entire debacle. I'm not exactly sure. It's also pretty difficult to see exactly where they bought these coins and what the price was. Um, however, yeah, let's say about 40,000 Bitcoin is what Tesla has, which is a pretty nice, nice understanding, right? At least to me, it's pretty cool. The company took some chips out of the table in March and booked a 101 million profit. Hmm, actually, to be honest with you, it could also be that he does not count for how many he uh, has already sold. Ah, whatever, guys, I'm not sure, but it's pretty interesting just to kind of understand that 40,000 Bitcoin. Then on Twitter... Let's quickly check it out here. Straight up XRP posted something, but as you guys most likely know by now, the internet here is so extremely bad that some simple things that you take for granted, like loading a tweet, can sometimes become the chore of a lifetime. He asked on Twitter, how much dollars do you need to have in XRP right now in order to be worth at least a million dollars at the peak of the bull run? And the difficult part is in determining what bull run he's talking about. I mean, I've said it before that I kind of see from a certain perspective how there's a constant bull run in crypto that's we've basically never seen a bear market just quite yet because it just basically keeps outperforming itself with higher highs and higher highs and higher highs. If you kind of zoom out to a weekly or month, nah, let's just do a weekly perspective. It just looks like it's on a continuous uh, bull market. With the S&P and whatnot, it, it doesn't necessarily look that way. It kind of really looks as if there's bear markets and it really just kind of dumps itself to the ground. With crypto, it really might be so that, for example, since the time it was um, created in 2008-9, let's say 2009, at the time of the financial crisis, that since there hasn't been any major crisis like that, except for the small, I guess, crisis we could call in 2020, there basically hasn't been any crypto crisis either. And it might only happen once we also see another major financial crisis, but it's just some speculation, something to think about as... Really, if you start to zoom out a little bit, has crypto really crashed that much? It depends on how you look at it. In terms of movements in a single day, week, month, yes, it's definitely been bearish. However, if you zoom out, it's always looking bullish. And I mean, cryptocurrency is an asset class of its own. It's really difficult to determine what the normal volatility would be and when exactly something constitutes as a bear market, at least in my opinion it is. So I would say if we're talking about this little cycle right now of you know, the next consecutive months of bullishness, I would say, you know, we're talking about $10 per XRP, maybe so about 100,000 XRP. A lot of people are thinking, though, that it's going to be $100 per coin, apparently. Um, yeah, that's that. And then uh, I saw this as well. Investing legend Mark Mobius says Bitcoin is going to break lower. Pretty funny. He said that on the 27th, I believe that day or the day afterwards, things just start to do really well. So Mark Mobius is also leery of companies that have invested in Bitcoin. And so... He says, I don't see how enthusiasm of our crypto is, to, is going to grow in this environment. I can wear a gold watch, but I can't wear Bitcoin. Yeah. A lot of people are talking about intrinsic value of Bitcoin, as if every single thing out there has intrinsic value. You can wear a gold watch, but you can't wear Bitcoin. 
So, just because you can touch it, theoretically speaking, doesn't mean it should be that valuable. Even though you can wear a gold watch, how much gold is there in a gold watch? Very often, not that ridiculously much. And the point being, well, you could have a steel watch, you could have a different sort of watch. Are you, are you only buying that gold watch for the vanity or are you buying it because it's a precious metal that's gonna have a higher heating temperature so you're less prone to die from freaking, I don't know, going into a pit of freaking hot water and your, your, your normal steel watch boiling or something stupid like that. I mean, come on, gold, it's, it's, thin, it's a vanity type of thing. I know it's used for computer chips and whatnot, but if it's a use like this, like just being some sort of jewelry asset, it's just people's vanity. And it's still that little thing, which often these guys say is, is what drives Bitcoin, supply and demand. Gold being a scarce thing, right? Silver being a scarce thing. Silver is used for so much. Gold is used for really little if you actually put it into perspective. It's really just what, what the crazy guy would want to pay for it. Because ultimately, if people start thinking, hmm, gold jewelry is nothing but mm, me trying to impress somebody else, or you want it because what, 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 what could you really think of why you'd want to wear jewelry for? To make yourself feel prettier? I always put that analogy out there of if you were the only person who could see and everybody else in the world was blind, would you still wear it? If you're saying yes to that one, all right, my man, you're right, you're wearing it for yourself. If you're saying no, you wouldn't wear it because it has no purpose, or they know you're wearing it for other people's eyes. And ultimately, it's it's literally just like a lot of the clothes in any way. Um, but I, I guess they will not really put clothes as an investment, even though it's kind of the same thing, right? I mean, clothes, some of them are scarce because it's made by a designer, for example. And I guess it's, it's something you can touch. Yet still, people are not, you know, it's not an appreciating asset because people don't necessarily want to have things which are either secondhand or really, you guys get the picture right there? The whole gold analogy, it's still the same type of concept as with cryptocurrencies. The only key difference is you can't really touch it, yet the intrinsic value can be measured differently as with gold, it also has to do with the fact that it's difficult to acquire. There's mining rigs necessary, um, the real mining rigs, I should say, or you have to go with a sif, go to a freaking water, a little river, and with Bitcoin, there's actual mining rigs necessary as well. There are kind of, you know, computer mining rigs. But people often call those the intrinsic value as that needs to what's to be there for Bitcoin to be able to run. Um, and, and if that were gone, it would be nothing. But people have invested so many billions of dollars into that to let the system be out there. Same thing goes for diamonds sometimes too, where it's like diamonds is a really big industry. Are diamonds really rare? Not really. Are diamonds really special in any way, shape or form? No. Yet people pay for it because other people like it and... Yeah, it doesn't mean it doesn't work, right? It doesn't mean it doesn't work. So yeah, this is my, my quick little example here. Hopefully it made a little bit of sense. If it doesn't, I'm so sorry. But I'll see you guys again in another crypto video later today.